It's late Monday night. It's 1.13 in the morning. And we're here with episode 27 of Weird Mind News Trip. This is going to be delving into some of the new releases, all the trailers, and all the new releases of this week in news. So, let's just get right into it with this sultry voice. And I don't have a Napoleon complex. Napoleon had a me complex. Don't cross me! So we start this week's new releases with an all-new epic blockbuster from the director of Ridley Scott. And that comes in the film of Napoleon. Now this will tell the tale of Bonaparte as he observes his perspective of his military achievements and rule over France as well as a focus on the relationship with his lady Josephine. Now initially, the reception on this film had been decently received and since then the reviews have been a little more mixed with great praise for the performance of Shaquille Phoenix as Napoleon and Vanessa Kirby as Josephine and some of the set pieces, but a lot of the mixed reception to the major amount of historical inaccuracies in the film. It has also been he getting heavily criticized by the French publications as it was probably expected it would because, you know, it's inaccurate. But if you want to see the achievement of one of France's famous faces, then you can do so now in cinemas, or you can hold off for directors because it's apparently coming to one of the streaming services soon. But if a historical set piece is not much your thing and you prefer an animated adventure instead, then you are in luck, as Disney has now dropped their newest animated film, of wish. Now this will follow the pr new princess of Asher, who wake makes a wish so powerful that it's answered by a cosmic force of a little star named Star. Soon they team up to save the kingdom from King Magnifico and prove that the will of one courageous human connects with the power of the stars. Wondrous things can happen. Sounds like my final project. I should probably upload that soon. Now the reception on this film has been a bit more mixed to low received as people see it as a disappointing film to coincide with the 100th anniversary of Disney and a little bit too generic and disappointing music. Though you may have given performances and animation its praise and if you want to check it out then you can do so now in cinemas. I have one question. If someone came to you and offered a way to fix your money debts with a strange symbol card, would you take it? Well, then this next show will be all for you, as we have now got the release of the all-new reality show based on Netflix hit with Squid Game, The Challenges. This series will see 456 contestants go against one another in a series of challenges based on the hit South Korean show, all for the chance of winning $4.56 million, the biggest prize pool ever in television history. The reception has been a little over the place, although there has been some legal issues apparently planned for some of the contestants due to the harsh conditions with some suffering hyperthermia and other ailments. But we'll keep an eye on how that all turns out. But if you want to find out for yourself how everything turns out, the first five episodes are all available to stream now with a new episode every Wednesday on Netflix. And to wrap up the new releases of this week, have you ever wanted to fight a cartoon-based Godzilla parody, a boy genius with a ginormous head, a talking starfish, and a sponge while playing as a lasagna-loving cat that can be played on Mondays? This was an actual thing in the first game, and hopefully it's still continued over in the second one. Then you're then look no further, as the last of the releases of this week is an all-out brawl with Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2. This is the sequel to the 2021 game that will see some more new and improved gameplay, characters, and story for you and friends that do get all out in many locations across the fast Nickelodeon animated shows and series. The reception of this game has been pretty positive, with many claiming it has improved and fixed issues from the last game. And if you want to play it yourself, it's now available on PlayStation 4 and 5, Xbox One, X, X and S, Nintendo Switch, and PC. And with that, that's all the new releases that we have for this week. No crack, Gromit. We've forgotten the crack. So the first trailer for this week was actually released last week, but I didn't know so until after I finished recording, so I'm gonna throw it in with this week. But I have to cast your mind back to a decade ago, when there was an adult comedy film about a man and his teddy bear. The bear also sounds a lot like Peter Griffin from Family Guy, and this was of course the movie of Ted. Now, that foul mouth bear is back again with an all new series just simply titled the Ted TV series. Now this series will be set just in the early part of the first film in the early 90s and see Ted's early days with Jonathan and some misadventures over time. It could possibly see some present day stuff as well going off the little teaser trailer you're going to show here, but it does sound interesting and hopefully it will be good and we can find out more when this series begins releasing from January 11th of next year. Well hee hee, cracking good VR experience Grummit. As we are heading to an all new way to check in on our 
favorite claymation inventor and his loyal dog companion on West Wallaby Street as we have an all new adventure with Wallace and Gromit in The Grand Getaway. Now this new VR experience will see Wallace and Gromit creating an all new form of crazy golf as we see them blast off into the cosmos and plays probably the front and back nine on many a strange planet. Now this looks like quite the fun little adventure to experience in a virtual world and you'll be able to experience it yourself some point soon when it releases on the Meta Quest 2 and 3 and on other VR headsets sometime soon. I'm projecting probably next year. And to wrap up a very quiet week for trailers, this isn't any footage, but rather in the form of an announcement trailer. As it seems, we have got an all new trailer to announce an all new adaptation of the classic 1980 series of Karate Kid. Now, from this announcement trailer, it doesn't show anything, but does seem to be a case that will maybe connect to both the original films and maybe the Cobra Kai television series and the 2010 remake with Jane Smith, as both Ralph Macchio and Jane Jackie Chan would make an appearance in this film. Besides that, they seem to be looking for that person to become the next face of the Karate Kid and are holding open auditions to look for that person. And if you feel you have what it takes to fit the bill, I'm gonna put the link in the description of what they're looking for down below. And yeah, besides that, not much else is known, but we know that this film is projected for some point start production in early next year and releasing in December of next year. And besides all that, that's all the trailers that we have for this week. Wrong! So we'll start this week's news stories with a return to something already discussed this week, just in the trailer section, and that is with Wallace and Gromit's studio of Ardman Animations. Now, as you've known from my other videos where I may have mentioned them, they have been the studio that have been shown you can still make very entertaining films and shows using stop motion claymation. But it may be the case that could be in trouble soon, as it had been discussed that the company or factory that will supply the studio with its clay supplies has apparently shut down, and there's a growing concern that their next project, which after Chicken Run, is a new Wallace and Gromit film expected for some time next year apparently, may be their last project that will they may have enough clay for. Now, they have come out and mentioned that, you know, they made a statement that they appreciate the concern, but they have specified that they have plenty on reserve for some of the older projects that can be reused. They seem to be okay for the time being. Now, whether this is just to reduce any worry or concern for the Bristol-based company is anyone's guess, but I am sure that over time, if they run out, they may see the end or some new company will come along and save the day. We'll have to see how accurate the story really is soon enough whenever any more updates come out. What do you think of all this news and do you believe that they'll be fine with the amount of clay with their benefactor supplier out of business? Let me know what you think of all of them down below in the comments. And now for some casting news that's been floating around the interwebs for the last few days and this comes in the form of casting for the upcoming release of Superman Legacy for DC. Now this film has gotten quite the heavy cast already and I know there's a few other ones that came out this week which I might throw in if this becomes true or not. That is being led by the director director writing a production version of James Gunn. And one of them that has been discussed from this week is that it would eventually lead to the casting reveal of one of Superman's most famous villains as of course Lex Luthor. And this casting may be coming in the form of Nicholas Holt. Now Holt is not new to the superhero scene as he's already played a character for the Fox's X-Men series as the young beast in Days of Future Past. But he's also been trying to step in for the role of another big name, basically going for the main lead role. And initially he was always the one of the final two choices for both the Matt Reeves Batman universe before losing out to Robert Pattinson and even for this Superman movie, which he, we lost out to uh, David Cornswish. It makes sense that basically you can know you can die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain, as that quote goes in The Dark Knight. And I could definitely feel the case that Nicholas Holt would be a pretty great actor to play Luther. Now, hopefully, it turns out pretty decently good, and not more in the case of a weird Jesse Eisenberg, Lex Luthor the second or junior kind of thing. It's not even the proper Lex Luthor, but I don't know. Which is, it, at the moment, it's a speculation, has been officially confirmed, there has been talks about it, but I could definitely see it happen, but, you know, let's we'll see when it all confirmed. But what are your opinions on this casting? Do you think he'll do a great performance as Lex Luthor, or do you see someone else playing the role instead? Also, what is your favorite performance of Holtz? I really liked him this year in um, Renfield, and if you've seen it, it's a very good movie. Let me know what you think of it all down below in the comments. And now we're heading to a galaxy far, far away as we talk on the major franchise 
of Star Wars. Now, as you know, over the last few years, we have seen a heavy amount of content for this, this franchise that has one new piece every year since 2015's Force Awakens, around five new films and with about, I'd say, 10 shows, with many more on both sides coming along over the next few years. Now, it has not been all perfect and lots of had some major profits. It had their issues like many divide over the last two in the Skywalker saga of Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker and some of the series feeling underwhelming to many fans and has been a divide among many. Besides the point, a lot of these people projects would have been some established rames including with Kathleen Kennedy overlooking it all and two of the big names making content for this universe is of course John Favreau and Dave Filoni, the latter of which we are talking about today because it was announced earlier this week that Filoni will now be the lead chief creative officer for Lucasfilm and the Star Wars brand given he has helped create most of the hit content and recent memory for the series with Mandalorian with Favreau, Ashoka and Clone Wars as well as The Bad Batch. So he's had a good eye for the universe. Now whether he'll make it all in the upcoming titles exciting like The Acolyte and Skeleton Crew and an upcoming film with Rey again and all the other ones and make them anticipated and great as it seems the Hot Galaxies need to find some good balance again hopefully he'll be the one to do so. But we'll see how it all turns out. What are your thoughts on this new role for Filoni and do you think he'll help make it more anticipated or is Star Wars in the odd spot of being a possible lost cause? Let me know what you think of it all down below in the comments. Let's have a discussion about it all. Now these last two stories kind of connect to each other but we should head over to the land of horror first and to the slasher side of things as we talk on news relating to the franchise of that black cloak wearing mask wearing killer of ghost faced in the Scream franchise. Now, the franchise has enjoyed quite the success of, a lot of the near three decades that has been present on screen, with the two new revival films of 5 and 6 both being well received and getting some decent box office. A title that would have been the most probable horror film of this year had not an animatronic bear and his gang shown up, and it had been discussed after the release of Scream 6 earlier this year that there was a planned 7 film of the franchise. But it looks like the some of those plans may be in trouble as it seems there has been some casting issues and mainly comes down to the two new leads from the revival of Melissa Barrera and Jenna Ortega. Now with Barrera, it was not more unavailable but rather the case that early this week she was fired from the upcoming 7th film in the franchise. The reason for this was due to some social media posts that she made about the current conflict when the Israel-Gaza war and the whole thing with Hamas and due to some views on it has been let go from the film. Now myself, I haven't seen any of the posts myself so I don't want to get the scope of what she said, but I can understand the case that it's a bit of a touchy subject to talk about now in this day and age, in this current day, so I guess we can learn more about it later, but we don't know. But as for Ortega, there seems to be two reasons for her not returning. The first one would be related to her not being available in solidarity with her co-star. The other reason is relating to the next story, which is about her scheduling conflict with the filming of the second season for Netflix's Wednesday series, to make a hassle do both at the same time. Now, as put the film in a bit of a situation has been reported that they are now trying to get Nev Campbell back to return to the franchise to end it as possibly as she wasn't in the sixth film due to some unfair payment methods. This has caused quite a divide with some even starting hashtag of boycotting Scream 7. But it's hard to see how this will turn out. I myself am kind of a hit or miss with the Scream franchise but you know there's people who enjoy it so I'm not gonna this and anything of that like you enjoy whatever you like but i'm sure we'll probably get more proper analysis of what it all is going down when more updates come along if there is any but what are your thoughts on all of this discussion and do you think it's a fairly justified thing to do or do you think it's a little bit blown out of proportion i'd like to hear what your thoughts are on all this down below in the comments and to end the stories for the week i am of course looking back to the previous story as i had mentioned about the acting cv of one miss jenna ortega i did mention the case that there was two stories going about why she was not returning for Scream 7 and that's of course what I'm talking about the latter point I mentioned which is that she's having some scheduling conflicts with her other big project piece down the line which is of course with Wednesday as it's been confirmed that a second season was confirmed to be making after the success of the first season and they plan to start filming it sometime early next year but that's not the whole story it has been brought to attention that they are moving the setting for this new season for for better cost, aesthetic, and some new change of scenery. As it's not going to be filmed now in Romania, but now instead heading over to my homeland of Ireland. Yes, which 
It makes sense for some more ancient historical setting, a lot more of a fantasy and historical pieces have been filmed here, like Viking, The Last Duel, Disenchanted, and all those other ones, so I can definitely see it making a lot more sense. Also, just a bit of a side roll, if there's any extra roles going, I would gladly be some kind of weird werewolf looking human or something like that from my very hairiness, but I'm just throwing it out there, if anyone can get in touch. I appreciate it. But I'm sure we'll hear more about this over time. And when we do, I'll update in a later video with any info on it or if like a release date for the series or some set photos or something like that. But we'll see how it turns out. What are your own thoughts on it all? And are you signing for season two? And would you love to know more about your pins in the first season as well? I'd like to hear what your thoughts on it are. Let me know what you think of it all down below in the comments below. And with that, that's all the news that we have for this week. Just follow the silly sound of my and with that, that's all we have this week for the newest episode of Weird Mind Newsroom. And I hope you enjoyed this more chill, somber ASMR piece video. Now, it's just some updates on some upcoming projects. My review for Ninja Turtles movie is ready to go. All I've got to do is just make a thumbnail. So I should hopefully have it out by midweek. I'm hoping to release by Tuesday, maybe Wednesday at the latest. But I'm going to get around to like editing this and do the thumbnail for that. Other bits, I'm going to get to Barbenheimer over the next little bit as well. As well as work on deciding here. I'm splitting the rewatch of on the Disney live action ones into two. I'm going to get the first part out by Christmas, which is going to be from the Dalmatians movies all the way up to Christopher Robin for the first part. And then the second part is going to go from Dumbo all the way up to Little Mermaid because I have a bit of time before Mufasa drops next Christmas. So give it that. Also, I want to at least try and do maybe a game review. I'm probably near the end of Tears of the Kingdom, so hopefully with something like that or something, or I might have some other games I might do a review of first, but I don't know. If there's ways you can, uh, both programs or materials to buy to like, I can record software of, let me know if you can let me down below. I would appreciate it just to know so I can go record it properly, get like, a better authentic experience. Other bits, I want to at least try and make an ASMR piece or something. I have an idea in mind from special someone to help me with that. Like, I have an idea I want to work on. May I keep it to myself or I'll figure or some bits on it. Other bits, I want to have an idea like sort of a reading one where I read stories in like a weird goofy or summer aesthetic so like a like you know a children's book is a tragedy or like a, a steamy romance novel is like a comedy book or something I don't know it's all other bits and long form videos and everything that I'm working on bits you know apologies for my disheveled tired look I was just busy working entire Black Friday weekend so please excuse my look and also to any US viewers a uh, happy Thanksgiving it's pretty late for that but you know happy Thanksgiving anyway and that's all I have for this week so if you enjoy this content you want to see more from me I at least upload more more than once a week when I can. You can do so by liking and subscribing so I know that we love what your opinions on it. My goal for the end of this year is to reach 50 subs and we're about 11 or 12 away. So any support is any support and I appreciate any bits. You know, so comment below all your thoughts and opinions and all the new releases and trailers and uh, news. If you've seen any bits, what you'd like to hear about it. If you have any things you want me to shout out in a special segment or any bits of long form videos you want me to make for, for you, I will gladly do it. Give me a shout out in the comments or in my social medias, which I can find a in the description of my channels and even sharing around the people that might not have seen my stuff already but that's all i have for now so until then you all stay being a very wonderful people because you all are wonderful people and have a great day every day doing many great things and i'm gonna go to bed now so i'll see you all in the next video so goodbye everybody and take care adieu